Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Rolling on a Budget. Um, today's video is a little different than what I usually do because we are debt free. Debt free. <laughs> um, so we're gonna just answer a couple questions and ask each other questions just about like our debt free journey um, and a little update on our lives. And then I'm gonna go quickly over my budget prep for June as well. So let's get into it. By the way, guys, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Rolling Out a Budget, you should. Um, but if you do, you've probably seen photos of this man right here. He is my husband, Kyle. So Aww. welcome, Kyle, onto my channel today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, Kyle, how does it feel to be debt free? Feels nice. Um, I guess it feels liberating because, you know, you own your things, you know what's yours and what isn't you don't feel like you know you're just borrowing something like a car from people or with student loans which we don't have uh, it doesn't feel like you know you're just owing the school money or anything like that you know what you have and you know you just have a sense of ownership over your things and um yeah stuff like that <laughs> i agree i definitely agree um do you feel like your life has changed a little bit or anything? I mean, it's only been two weeks, by the way, guys. Like, two weeks since we paid off our last debt. Um, I guess it felt like the first, like, couple days we were like, oh, our car is a nice car. It's a good car. And so we cleaned it up a little bit. Yeah. Not like we took terrible care of it, <laughs> but we're just more mindful of little things. And, you know, like, oh, well, it's ours. Like, it doesn't belong to anybody. It's only, it's our car. It doesn't belong to anybody else. So... I guess you take more pride in what you have, especially, you know, like our vehicle, our home. We don't count. Like, yeah, we don't count that as debt. It's cheaper to have a mortgage than it is to rent where we live. So we're not counting on mortgage. Yeah, yeah. But like even like school things like um, having my associates, things like that. We didn't take out any loans for that. And all that kind of added into it at the time. It just, it just didn't happen with loans and things like that. But Overall, I feel like you. I'm more proud of myself, I would say. Yeah, I totally agree. And back to that car thing, like I totally agree. I feel like I appreciate our car more now than I did when we were owing on it. Yeah. Because I'm like, wow, we paid off like 11 grand of that loan within four months. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. So like, I'm like, wow, look, we did this. Like, this is our baby. So yeah, I yeah. agree. I definitely do appreciate the car more now that we own it. Yeah. And we got our, like, title and everything. It's cool, yeah, having the title. You're like, ooh. Yeah. It, 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 that was cool when that came in the mail. That makes it very official. Yeah. Before we get to the next question, also for you guys, heads up, because I did not know this until I saw someone on Instagram that said this. If you do pay off your car early and you had gap insurance on it, uh, ask yeah. for a refund. I did not know that until a month ago. And someone was like, hey, if you're paying your car off, make sure you ask for a refund on your gap insurance. So if you don't know what gap insurance is, usually when you buy a new car and you owe a lot of money on it, um, you have a big loan that you're taking out, they recommend that you get gap insurance or they will require it sometimes. If so, if you get an accident and your, to your vehicle gets totaled, um, they will cover whatever you owe on it. So that's kind of nice. So um, we're going to get a refund hopefully in a couple weeks here. I turn in the paperwork. It's just a form I had to fill out and you send it to your car dealership and then they'll send you a refund. So I'll let you know how that process goes. It seems like it's going really smooth. The lady was really nice. She sent me the form. I sent it back and she said she got it. Checks should be on the way. So do that if you're paying off your car early. <laughs> yeah, because you said they... You were kind of worried if they'd be nice about it. You'd yes. heard mixed things. Either they were like, oh, no, no, no. Or they are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Or yes. I saw an Instagram post and someone, you know, said, hey, make sure you get a refund for that gap insurance. And I saw several comments that were like, it's been a pain in the butt. The car dealership is taking forever to give me the form. So they really want to try to hold back. Um, but the car dealership we got in Las Vegas, the lady seemed really nice. Like I said, she sent me the form. I sent it back, filled out. And she was like, cool, got it. So hopefully it'll be smooth. So we shall quick, see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was something I had no idea about. Any little money counts. I don't know how much it is, honestly, because I really, I don't even remember. I should have paid more attention to how much it was. I yeah. just knew it added an extra, I don't know, $10 or something yeah. to our monthly payment. So it's just one of those fees. You're like, oh yeah, something, yeah. getting a car. That's one of the things. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how much we get back. Either way, it's free money in my eyes, I guess, that I would have been paying that I should be getting back. So that's good. Yes. Yeah. 
So what was the hardest part for you on this journey of becoming debt free? Um, I think there's a couple hard parts for me during this journey. Um, I think one was eating, not eating out as much as we probably were before. And I think like we just got really accustomed to it and it was quick and easy. And I love cooking. For the people that don't know, I'm a culinary arts teacher, so I love cooking. Don't get me wrong. But there were nights where I had derby practice or we were going somewhere and we're pretty busy during the week and you were working two jobs. So like getting food was just kind of an easy option. Um, And probably cutting back our grocery. I have no idea really how much we were spending before on groceries, but I know it was a lot more than what our budget is now. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, we have a $200 grocery budget and a $50 takeout budget. Um, it used to be, what, $25 and we upped it to $50 now that we're debt free. Yeah. But yeah, $200 groceries for the two of us for a whole month. Um, is Some people say that's tight. Some people say that's kind of more, but we make it work. I cook a lot more now and I like it. It's really fun, but... I think that was probably the hardest part. And then I think having to say no. um, Luckily, because it's COVID year, that wasn't too bad. You know, people weren't doing all that stuff. But, like, there were times where we wanted to go do something. And we're like, okay, is this going to benefit us to our debt-free journey? Or is it not worth it? And most of the time, it was not worth it. Yeah. That was probably the hardest part for me. I would agree. I like junk food. So, it's always, like, that's my thing. I always go to, I'm like, ooh, that looked good. Staying up late. I would agree. Eating food, yes. (laughs) I would agree. So, what was the easiest part of the journey for you, Kyle? Probably that you knew what you were doing. (laughs) And, like, I've learned more, but you're definitely the captain of the ship. And I think you made it easier just kind of explaining things in, you know, simple man terms. And I was like, okay, okay, I get what you mean. (laughs) And telling me what we needed to do and what need to cut back on because i'm pretty easy going i wasn't like oh some of it's hard but i'm like okay yeah, that's fine yeah because um yeah and overall i don't know once you get in the groove of it it's pretty easy because you just know what you're what you have what your limits are and things like that but yeah um because food was the hardest part the easiest part was kind of just i'm a i'm a homebody sometimes anyway and covid did make it easier so i was like ah, i could just hang out and play video games or something like that because yeah. we didn't go out very, very much. And the couple of times we did, it was usually like for a special occasion or we had already, you had already been like, oh, do you want a budget for this? Plan I'm like, for yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. So I think the easiest part is just planning or assuming that we'll need to figure out something or save up for this thing coming up. So I think that's the easiest part now is because you kind of live within your means a lot better. I love the way you said that too. Like you planned it and you know what to expect like yeah don't you think and i know this is how i feel so i'm curious how you feel but i remember when we like first moved in together and there were months where we were short money yeah or we'd have extra money and then we just go blow it on something because we're like oh look we have 400 dollars. like let's yeah. go buy it and then we're like oh crap we're minus 20 dollars mm-hmm. in our checking so it's kind of nice to be like there's an expectation of what i can spend to be okay and i know i'm gonna be okay no matter what yeah, it's nice, and I think it comes with growing up anyway. I guess, I guess the, it doesn't come to everybody. It is something you need to learn yeah. and, like, be disciplined about. But, yeah, especially when you live in Vegas, you're like, oh, let's just go hang out with our friends. Or, like, oh, you just buy, like, a bunch of drinks tonight and go hang out. But, yeah. And then the end of the month comes, and we're like, ah. Oh, I guess that was fun the one night, <laughs> but I forgot about the spill. Or I forgot that we had to do this. So, yes. yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, You know what you have when you're going out, so... You learn. I think it's a discipline thing. It yeah, definitely is. So oh, you, for sure, discipline. You you hone in pretty quickly on it. So as long as you're, it's like any, it's like a muscle. As long as you practice it, like I could, like there was times I really wanted to break, and I was like, oh, let me see. I could probably convince her that we could go out and eat tonight. I was like, no. Nah. And sometimes he did. <laughs> yeah. Once in a while, here I did, and I was like, come on. And but yeah, then later on, we're like, oh, I forgot we spent money on that. Now we have to figure this out. So yeah. it didn't always work out, or it wasn't always worth it. Yeah, I yeah, I totally agree. And it did take us time to get that discipline. Yeah, you know, it's not overnight. Yeah, we started May 2020. I started, I found Budget Mom in April 2020. And then I started looking into financial and like reading and getting as much information as possible and like system in place. So we started in May and the first three months were the rockiest. And yeah. it was like making a budget, messing up, then honing in what do we need to fix? 
did I limit too much on groceries? Do I need a little bit more for it to be realistic? So it's like finding that realistic balance within your life because just writing down that I'm going to spend $50 on groceries doesn't mean you're going to actually spend $50 on groceries. Like you need to be realistic. I think. Well, yeah, it depends on the family too. Yes. Cause you all have those different needs. So I think the couple months are easy to figure out what works for you. Yeah. And I think it was a lot of communication, especially with like your partner of like, what do you need to feel okay? And what do I need to feel okay? And you know, yeah. we did have fun money for each of us. So we each got like, an allowance kind of of what mm -hmm. we could do whatever we wanted with that money. So if I wanted to go to Starbucks until my money ran out, I could. If you wanted to get games, you could. So it was kind of a nice balance of like, this is your wiggle room and this is what you have. So you know what to expect every month and like kind of plan around that if you want to save it up or just spend it all, so. Yes. Yeah. All right, Kyle. What is the best part of being debt free now? Like I said, I know it's only been two weeks, but like maybe long term or even just now. Uh, I guess it's kind of the stuff we've talked about. Like we've been planning little trips and stuff here and there and been able to plan things out farther or add to buckets in our Hannah's Ally Savings account. Is that what it's called? The next savings account? Was it yeah, called? it's a, we have an Ally Joint sinking, or Savings account, but there's sinking funds or buckets. They call, yeah, them, they buckets. call them buckets. So if you have Ally Savings, you probably know what I'm talking about because it's the best savings account. Yeah. You can create your own buckets in there. But yes, the buckets. Yeah. I'd say that's the best part is you get to plan bigger things in the future too because you know you have that income to put towards something. Yeah. I, know, I know you like it for... You know, like we'll toss more like dog medical stuff or we'll, you know, very logistical stuff that totally <laughs> makes sense to throw money towards. But I'm like, oh, yeah, we could you know, we can plan this trip to Japan that we want to do next year. And it's fun seeing more money get thrown at that. Yeah. Or, yeah. And like even little things like I like having my fun money and stuff like that. Like even I think I don't know, like is it common like do some people once they pay off their debt, do you think they fall off the horse pretty oh, hard? Oh, totally. A lot of people do. And it's really hard because. You're like, now I have all this income. And you're throwing in it junk again. or Yes. Something. Okay. Yeah. People that's... do fall off the bandwagon pretty easily. Yeah. So I guess I'm happy I don't feel that way, really. Like, I'm still fine with my, you know, like 50 bucks a month because now I don't spend money on complete junk all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think the yeah, biggest thing is just planning trips or things to do in the future. And we talked about it the other day because we've taken my grandparents to the Grand Canyon because my grandpa is dealing with some, you know, health issues. So he had a bucket list and we were able to go take them and do things. It was before we were debt free, but we were doing really well anyway. But we're debt free now. We're taking my mom and going on a trip to San Diego. So we get to do stuff for other people, which is nice. And yeah, yeah. So it, it's nice to have that comfort of doing it. like we're not rich or anything like that. But, you know, we have that comfort and that stability to be able to have other people experience things with us and take them to do things. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Not rich. Yeah. Two teacher salaries. But it is yeah. really nice to be able to have that wiggle room of like, we have the money to be able to do other things with other people that can benefit from it, you know? So it's not just us benefiting from it. Like I want to kind of share that with others. And mm -hmm. it's fun. We both enjoy that very much. So. Yeah. Because we've been fortunate to be able to figure stuff out and go on fun yeah. trips. And like I said, like not everybody has the, the discipline. So like some people discover that later on and not everybody gets that opportunity. Like my, my family, they were like, oh, yeah, we've never really been on a trip to see to just do something for us. It's always been to see other family. And I feel like in our little debt free journey, we figured out like, oh, let's do stuff when we can. Let's do stuff smart. And so we've got to have other people just go on a trip just because it's fun and we can do it. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, Hannah, what's next? <laughs> in the uh, journey. In the journey. Uh, well, debt-free journey has kind of come to an end. So, end of an era. So, it's kind of like, okay, what's next? Um, the past few months, probably like in January, I started watching Choose Fi and getting into fire movement. And I don't know if everyone really does that when they're on their, like, debt-free journey. Um but it seems like a lot of people are into it. Um, like I said, I started with Budget Mom and then I found kind of everything else. So I love Budget Mom and everything with that. Um, but I think it was like my starting point and then I grew from there and learned all this other stuff like credit card hacking and mm -hmm. fire movement stuff. So I think that's kind of our next step. Um, we talk about it a lot is retiring early. 
Um, I think for the t- both of us, like we forty is when we want to retire, if not earlier, if possible. Yeah. Um. Does that mean like we have to like be super super strict about everything like for the next seventeen years or whatever fifteen years? Yeah. Not really, you know. Like we're still pretty lenient. Um, we both love traveling, and that's not something we're willing to compromise to like retire early. But we have found some like workarounds with that so we're working on or we're starting doing travel hacking and um credit card hacking so we're trying to do that to get two round trip tickets from japan um to here and we've actually kind of extended that i want to do japan and thailand and then come home um so i think it's just like being being willing to see what you want in life and then what you don't need in life and then take those out to enhance the things you want in life um and i think Credit card hacking is one of those for us. We really want to travel, but we don't really want to pay for it. So I think this is a good way to get the flights for cheap and get hotels for cheaper and for, or if not free. So um, that's kind of like our next thing, I think, is just like investing the money that we were put, putting towards debt, doing some credit card hacking to get points to get these free trips, learning more about that because I'm pretty new to it. But so far, I feel like we've been pretty good. We're on our second credit card. Yeah. We've got like a thousand points or a thousand dollars worth of points already. Um, so I think it's just taking your everyday life stuff and try to make money off of it. And yeah, but um, pretty much next steps is saving up a good sinking fund. We want to have a three month emergency, which is about 10 grand for us. Um, filling in those buckets on Ally, like we have a pet emergency fund, our car emergency fund, our home fund, our medical, so. 10th anniversary, the yeah. Japan trip. We have <laughs> the one. Japan trip. Those are things I look forward to, because I'm like, oh, cool, we can like have this ready for that when that time comes, because I'm not a good planner, so. <laughs> I'm still not a good planner, but I understand what planning does a little better now. I'm still a very, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I think I've definitely sparked your travel bug, and now you're like, travel yeah let's go like what's our next trip and stuff so yeah and the credit card hacking and stuff's cool like um yeah the choose fi guys that you watch all the time shout out to them they're pretty cool and yes. I've, I've learned little things just listening to it because usually hannah's watching that when i come home from my second job and so we'll just kind of finish up that podcast and then eat dinner and things like that so i feel like i have learned a little bit here and there aside from you if it, the For content sure, you yeah. watch yeah yeah, like I am living, breathing financial stuff 24 7. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on my Instagram is all FI stuff. So I'm always looking at new content and people and what people are doing. And it's cool. Yeah. And then when I get home, I'm doing stuff around the house and I have podcasts on the TV so I can just listen. So, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm reading financial books and stuff. So. Um, I think you just really have to like dive yourself into the community to get what you want out of it. Um, I recently joined the, for those who don't know, we live in Arizona. So I joined the Choose Five Phoenix group and we had a meetup last month, which was awesome. If anyone's watching from Choose Five, I love you guys. You guys are so awesome. And I feel like I have a new like family and friends group and they're already like trying to meet up again this month for breakfast potluck. So um, yeah, I'm really happy about that because Sometimes it can be really hard when people around you are not on the same journey or area of life and you just want to talk their ears off about stuff because that's how I am. And I know I bore people to death about it. So it was super refreshing to talk to people like-minded and that are either on their road to FI or they're FI and they're telling me about their life and their trips and how they retired early. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is awesome. So yeah. And I think the biggest thing is I don't want to retire early. I want to be financially independent. I want to be, you know, hopefully my job's not watching. But if something were to happen, like, you know, and I lost my job or whatever, or if I decide to quit because we have a baby or whatever, we're okay. You know, we have the money to be okay. We don't have to stress. We don't have to, like, cut back on things just to make it through it. Like, we're going to be okay. We have some money set aside. So I think that's the biggest thing. Agreed. Yeah. I guess we'll see where we go from here, but it's looking up. And I think you're very good at what you do. And I appreciate you. (laughs) So I'm excited to see what's next, Captain. (laughs) Yeah. I kind of got into it and I was like, hey, this is what we're doing. I'm like, okay. Okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to try this and see how it goes. And I think the first couple months you were like, not hesitant, but kind of like, 
okay, we're kind of like, why are we putting all our money towards it? And I think once you started seeing like, oh, we paid off our phones, we paid off our Kohl's, oh, we paid off the Chase credit card, oh my God, we're working on the car now, and kind of seeing those loans went down, I think you got a little bit more into it. Yeah, just I, a lot, because I'm not a math guy. That's definitely her department. <laughs> I like, like numbers. <laughs> I can write something pretty or I can edit video, but I'm not a good maths guy. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> once you explained it, and yeah, I was like, Okay, okay, that makes more sense. And just learning the lingo, too. There's a lot of lingo. There is. There is. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that means. But I would agree, yeah. Once It's it's very daunting to get into. It is definitely, like, you know, a commitment and figuring it out. Because, obviously, if it was super simple, everybody would be doing it. But some people, they get, like me, I was a little intimidated. I was like, that's a lot. So... Yeah. I think you helped me understand it a lot better. So, and hopefully, I think that's what your YouTube channel does as well. Yeah, I hope so. And I think it can be very intimidating, um, especially when you start just doing some research. You're like, oh my God, there's so many words I've never seen in my yeah. life. And they're telling me to do all this stuff. And it's hard to trust your resources that you're reading from of like, is this a wise decision? Is this good? But I think at the end of the day, you have to realize, okay, I'm in the same rut I've been in and nothing has changed and I don't like where I'm at. So something's gotta change. And I think it's personal preference too of what you choose to do. Um, so there's like an avalanche method or snowball method if you're Dave Ramsey people. And I've read his books, I'm not bagging on him or nothing, but I'm kind of in the middle ground of a bunch of different people. I like Budget Mom, I like Dave Ramsey, I like Fi. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, it's what works best for you and just changing something. I keep seeing this post on Instagram that it's like, you change one, or even if you do 1% different or better today, at the end of the year, that's 365% better of where you were. And I'm like, that's so true. Like just reading like 10 pages of a book, that adds up, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it does add up. So I like that, like just doing something to better where you are instead of just saying, oh, we didn't make our bills this month again. Oh, we're out of money. We're broke for the last week of the month. And then it's like miserable. Yeah. Horrible. I think there, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do it too. Because yeah. that's the one thing is some people are like, oh, I must be doing it because I'm not doing it exactly by the book. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, you watch quite a few different methods and kind of adapt all of them to the person you are. Like we said in the question before, um, it takes a little bit to see what works for you or maybe like, oh, this avalanche method isn't working. So let's try to adapt it this way or maybe I can try this way. So there's lots of different ways. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, anything else, Kyle, mm. that you want to share for the good of the order or anything? I don't think so. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, I don't like being on camera. So I'm usually <laughs> behind it or doing something else. I don't like being on camera. But it's nice to talk about it. And I'm proud of you and us and where we are and our little family, the support from our puppies and our cats and our family and friends. It's It's been a fun little journey. And I'm uh, optimistic for going forward with bigger stuff yeah i totally agree and yeah shout out to our family and friends that have listened to me talk about this for a year now and that has been supportive of us and like proud mm -hmm. of us and like you know it's fun to talk about it with other people and they're like oh my god that's awesome and like being able to kind of help other people too like when people ask me questions i'm kind of able to kind of guide them in the right directions and not yeah. like feel forced people love asking <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> it's it's fun and i think it's even funner now that we're like we are debt free. Like it worked. Like this whole year of us working our butts off paid off. You know, yeah. it's kind of hard when you're like starting. You're like, we need to pay off thirty thousand dollars, and yeah. when are we gonna pay off thirty thousand dollars? Yeah, it's a, it sounds like a fat number, but it's always just persistence, right? Yeah, and I think just little by little it went down, and mm -hmm. I think especially the past like six, the ha second half I felt like was easier. I think so, because we were already, you know, on, we were on the roll. Yeah. And I, like I said, I think once you have that discipline, it goes by a lot faster. Yeah. It's like, oh, we have tax return money. Oh, we have a stimulus check. You're expecting to put it towards Let's, something. Yeah. yeah. We need to put it towards debt. And that, yeah. that definitely helped us this year, too, was the stimulus checks and working from home. And a few McDonald's cheeseburgers here and there when you're not supposed to. <laughs> but if you get the app, you get reward points. And then you get some free cheeseburgers after a while. There's the tip. There's the tip. <laughs> there it is. Save, <laughs> save the money, right? There you go. By buying some now through the app, you get points. There's the hack. <laughs> yeah. You have to find the hacks in life to make money off of it if you're going to spend money. If you're going to mm -hmm. spend money, you need to be making back money. And that's why I love credit card hacking now because yes. it's stuff I'd already spent my money on either way, but this time I get money back and it's kind of nice to have. So Yes, ma'am. 
All right. Well, thank you, Kyle, for being on this video. And hopefully you'll be on some more in the future, too. And I, I'd love to do some more talk and ask some questions about stuff with you and topics. Well, I'll be around. So Who knows? thanks, maybe, maybe everybody. Maybe this could be a podcast or something. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> whenever you want me, um, I'll be around. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Kyle does the like video, yeah, video editing for everything, and he made my little graphics, and he does like the uploading part for me because I'm not a tech person. And if I did it, it would take me hours, and he just makes the process way faster. So he sets everything up for me, and I just kind of <laughs> do it, and then he like edits it and posts it for me, and like asks me what I want and stuff like that. So. I'm just the crew. She's the talent. We were like, <laughs> Hannah's coming in. Hannah's coming in. We'll get it ready. Yeah. But no, it's 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 fun. I enjoy doing it because um, my second job was basically doing this, and while I'm happy not to have the second job or need it anymore, it's his last day today. Yeah, I do like editing and stuff, so it's something I, I like doing. I like the camera stuff. Sometimes I'm lazy and I'm like, oh, okay, but it always turns out good and fun. So yes. thank you, thank you. And then one more thing, guys. Um, before I get into the June budget prep because tomorrow is June 1st. Um, we are on summer break and we have some traveling going on. And that's why we've been kind of bad about posting lately was the last two weeks of school. If you're a teacher, you know, it's hectic <laughs> and finals are going on. So I haven't posted in a while just because it's been crazy. And then we're going camping, we're going to San Diego. So we have some travel going on. So if I'm uploading, um, not every weekend, that's why. So just want to give you guys kind of heads up or maybe I'll be posting during the week and not the weekend or whatnot during summer. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But yeah, yeah. Um, try to get it to you as fast as we can yes. when we do have it. <laughs> like this video, hopefully it'll be up pretty quick. Yes. So, all right. Thank you guys. Let's turn over to my June budget now. Budget prep. Hey guys. All right. So I know we just did a little like Q and A over there. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick budget prep for June. It's May 31st, so June starts tomorrow. So I kind of already filled in my numbers, but just good double, good to always double check and just kind of go over it with you guys. All right, so June, a um, couple of different pay or incomes coming in. So the first week um, is the last paycheck my husband's getting from his second job that he just quit today. His today was last day. Um, because we're debt free now, we kind of don't need that extra income, although it's always nice. Um, time is more valuable. Learn that. But so that's kind of his last paycheck. And then we also will get this $50 check, which is like a reimbursement for um, his phone bill and gas. All right. The second week, we're getting a huge spike in our income um, because we are getting our 301 money for being teachers. Um, so it adds to our normal paycheck as well. Um, and then for people that don't know what teachers stuff, even though we have summers off, you can have the option to get paid during summer. So it takes out like $200 out of our paychecks during the year just to make up for the weeks during the summer. Um, so we'll get our normal income plus other stuff sometimes. So third week, we will no longer have income coming in every week um, because he no longer works for um, his second job. So no income on the third week, fourth week, our normal income plus we signed up for summer curriculum work, which means we're working on building lesson plans, um, doing school stuff during summer. Um, me and my husband signed up for it. And then um, so it's like extra. It's just called a stipend. It goes on top of our normal paycheck. Fifth week, no money because we don't have that job anymore. Let me put a zero right there. Facebook pay Venmo. I don't put anything because. I'm not really budging that anyone's gonna send me money, but if they do, I'll put it here. Um, so that $50 check and then roll over $330. Might be a little more, a little less. I have to look at um, our made budget, but I think I'm pretty close with that. So that might have to change that a little bit. All right, so grand total of $10,694 is what I'm budgeting for June. So how am I gonna spend that money, you ask? I'm gonna invest and save it. For the most part, I'm gonna try. All right, so zero dollars into my Chase savings, hundred dollars into my husband's Roth IRA, hundred dollars into my Roth IRA, and then we're putting six thousand seven hundred dollars into our Ally savings. So that's that. Ally savings has buckets and all of my sinking funds. So that six thousand seven hundred dollars is gonna max out my family travel for the year, Christmas, our birthdays for the year our pet emergency fund, our car emergency fund, and our home emergency fund. So we're kind of taking that money and filling in our sinking funds. Um, now that we are debt-free, yay, 
we want to spend the rest of 2021 building up our savings. And then in January of 2022, we're going to start to fully max out all of our like investments accounts, like our IRAs um, and our um, HSAs and stuff like that. So we're kind of putting that off now because I want to build a buffer. Um, like I said, I want to max out those sinking funds and then I want to have a $10,000 sinking fund on top of that. Not planning anything out for our Robinhood accounts, $50 to our joint Fidelity account, $750 for our envelopes, which stays the same. Um, utilities, pretty much all this stays the same, uh, if not a little less. Like my electric and water has been a little less than that, but summer's coming. We live in Arizona, so our AC bill will get expensive. So I usually continue to pay the same price if they give me a lower bill because I don't want to owe a $300 bill during summer. Um, looks like all of our insurances are the same. My appliance insurance, we are going to discontinue that once we get a good home emergency fund. Um, that's kind of the only reason why I'm still having that $50, $54 appliance insurance bill is because I don't have a home emergency fund yet. So once I have that in June, I'm probably going to discontinue my insurance with them. And appliance, it's just like your fridge, your washer and dryer, your um, sink, stuff like that. All right, for Pets Chewy, I'm only budgeting $60 because I spent a little more in May, so I shouldn't need much in June. Doggy Training, I took out money in May, so I don't need any money for June. Um, we have a dog trainer for our dogs. That's one of the things of being debt-free now. I feel like I can afford that where I couldn't before, um, and I'm really happy about it because my dogs are doing so awesome now. I have two one-year-old boxers, our brother and sister, and they are crazy energetic and it's hard to control. So I love that we're able to do this now. Um, my dog CJ does have a vet appointment. It's $43, um, but I know he's probably gonna have to be on medication um, and I just don't know how much that's gonna be. So I'm just budgeting $100 to be safe. All right, transportation, which is just our gas for our car, um, is usually 120, but we have two trips we're going on. We're going up north for camping for a few days, and then we're going to San Diego and California for a few days, and gas is expensive now, so I just added $200 to be safe. Will I hit $320? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but better be safe than not. All right, my once, um, we have some therapy sessions. That's a $30 copay, so there's two a month. I have physical therapy starting in June for my shoulder, and I don't know how much that's going to be. And the lady was like, well, you can find out two days before your appointment. So I'm just budgeting 80. It may be more than that. Hopefully not. So and then Hulu, $2.15. Now, I still have this debt little box. I should probably delete it now that I'm debt free. I didn't even think about that. Um, but obviously zero for that. And then, oh shit, I always budget zero because I never want to spend money in oh shit, but sometimes oh shits happen and I have to fill it in. Um, but that's kind of what I'm budgeting for. Um, and that will leave me $387 I can roll over into July. I like rolling over money, um, just a couple hundred bucks. So the first week, if I'm not getting paid, I have some money for gas and groceries and stuff like that. Um, but I'm very excited to be able to throw $6,700 at our sinking funds. And I am pretty sure, guys, if I do the math correctly, pretty sure by the end of June, we will have a $100,000 net worth. So excited. We'll see. Because, <laughs> you know, oh shit's happened and maybe no shit's going to be an expensive button. Like our AC, fingers crossed, knock on wood that it won't be our AC breaks. But um, hopefully that pushes over the edge and we hit the hundred thousand dollar net worth, which would be awesome. Um, so that's kind of what's going on with me. I know this is kind of a longer video today, but thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe if you want more videos like this. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at rolling on a budget. Bye guys.